This video will explain how you create projects where your code is included in several different files at once. So to begin with, let's start with the simple case. This over here is your projects pane in MPLAB. So as you can see, you've created a project called My Project. And where is that located? Well, that's something you get to choose when you set up the project. So let's say that there's a containing folder, and it's got a common folder in it, and also a Lab 1 folder in it, and you created your project inside the Lab 1 folder. So there's the myproject.x folder that MPLAB created for you. So you will need some code. So let's say that you then right-clicked on source files, added an existing item, and when you did so, you clicked the copy box here before you selected the file. What that does is that MPLAB is going to create a copy of that code for itself inside the project folder. So now it's got a copy of that file inside the myproject.x folder. It also appears up here in the source files. However, that would be true no matter where you added the code from, including if you did not make a copy of it. You'd see it appear up here, but this panel doesn't actually tell you where that file is. So it's a good idea to know where it's located in your own files. So let's have a look at that studentmain.c file now. So here's the studentmain.c file. So you can see right here that there's a main function. There's also some other functions down here, helper functions. So there's an add and a subtract function. The prototypes are up here at the top, as they should be. And the main function uses one of them. So everything you need is all located in one file called studentmain.c, and if you compile the project, it should build. So now let's talk about how you extract these functions out into their own file. In other words, you want to make a library of functions that you can add to your project or not add to your project as necessary. So we want to remove these functions from studentmain.c and put them in their own file. So to begin with, you're going to take these functions and you're going to delete them out of studentmain.c. Then you're going to paste them into their own text file. Likewise, we want to delete the prototypes up here at the top out of the studentmain.c file and put them in their own text file. Now the C code, the actual functions, we're going to name that file mylibrary.c. The prototypes, we're going to name mylibrary.h. So the C file and the H file have to have exactly the same name, only the extension changes. So one of them will be .c, one of them will be .h. So now I've got those extracted out, where am I going to save these two files? Well, you have a choice in that, but for now, let's just assume that we save them to the myproject.x folder. So they're now in there with studentmain.c as well. If I try to compile my project right now, the build will fail. This is not going to work. And the reason why is that I haven't added these two files back into my project yet. So I do that in the MPLAB projects pane. So like before, I would right click on source files and add mylibrary.c into it. I'd also right click on header files and add the mylibrary.h file to it. And when I'm done, you'd see those files in the project pane. So there they are. So now, if I try to compile this project, is it going to work? It will not. It will still fail. The reason why is that this piece of code, studentmain.c, still needs the prototypes for all the functions. So we removed that. It needs them back. But we've now got a much tidier way of including them back in. All we need to do is add an include statement. So we say, hashtag include quotes mylibrary.h. And that includes all of these prototypes back into the code. So now, if we try and compile this code, it should build, because we've added the files to the project, and we've included the prototypes back into the studentmain.c file. And I'll just quickly remind you here that when you're adding your own code, you're going to use quotation marks like this. If you're adding one of XC8's own internal libraries, however, like the standard input-output library, then you'd use these angle brackets. So to keep things simple, I'm going to leave that out, however. So that's one way of getting a project working with your code split up into multiple files, but it's not actually the best way, because the point of a library is that you might want to use these functions in more than one project. And that means keeping them inside one of your project folders, inside one of your lab folders, is not the greatest place to put them. You'd like them to be somewhere more accessible. So let's say that instead of putting these files into your myproject.x folder, you had instead put them inside this common folder. So mylibrary.c and mylibrary.h are both inside the common folder, and your student main is still inside your project folder. 
you can still add them to your project exactly the same way, except that when you right-click and add an existing item, you would need to navigate over to the common folder to add those two files. Also, you would not want to check this copy checkbox when you selected the files. So if you do choose copy, it's going to make another copy of those files in your myproject.x folder, which you can do, but let's see how to do it without that. So these two files up here in your project pane are actually in the common directory, and there is no copy of them in your myproject.x folder. So they've been added to the project, but now we need to change one thing in our student main, and that is the path to the prototype, mylibrary.h. So here's the change you would need to make for this file structure that we've got pictured here. So this is the correct relative path to the mylibrary.h file. So what I mean is the default location that the project is going to go looking for code in is the project folder itself. So this myproject.x folder is where the project goes looking for code first. If I type dot dot slash, as I have up here, that tells the project go up one directory. So it's inside the myproject.x folder, dot dot slash says go up a directory into the lab one folder. Typing dot dot slash a second time tells it go up another directory, which puts it in the containing folder that contains all of the stuff you see pictured here. Once it's out into that container folder, you can then tell it go into the common folder and then go and look for mylibrary.h. So again, the default location is the project folder itself, dot dot slash tells it go up one directory, dot dot slash again tells it go up a second directory, and then you can tell it go into the common folder and then look for mylibrary.h. So this is the relative path to this file. By the way, you do have to be careful that the location you added those files from here in your projects pane is identical to the path that you're giving the project here in the include statement. If you do a mix and match approach, then you will get errors when you try to compile your project. So this video has covered how you create a project when you've got your code split into several different files. So before I finish up, I want to show you a few of the error messages that you'll get if you don't do all of these steps quite right. So first of all, let's say that you have forgotten to add your .h and your .c files to the project. So all you've got is student main, but your student main file does still have its include statement. So it tells the program where to find the file, but that file has not been added to the project. So what would you see? You would compile it and you'd get an error message. Specifically, you'd get an error message that looks like this. And all of the error messages tend to be a little bit cryptic, but after a while you start to get a feel for what they're trying to tell you. This one says, fatal error, mylibrary.h file not found. So again, that is happening because I've got my include statement here, but I didn't actually add that .h file to the project. I also didn't add the .c file. So that's a message that you might see, and it simply tells you, I didn't find this file that you told me I should be able to find. So what would happen if we didn't have that include statement? We'd still be missing the files, but the error message we got before was specifically because there is this include statement pointing to a file that hasn't been added to the project. What if we got rid of the include? What would that do? Well, again, you would try to compile this and you would get an error message. In this case, it would look like this. And it says, warning, implicit declaration of function add. In other words, we've used this function add right here and there's no prototype for it. So the warning message is saying, you tried to imply that this function exists. It's an implicit declaration of the function, but I don't actually have a prototype for that function. So this is one to remember. Whenever you see this warning, implicit declaration of function, whatever, that means it didn't find the prototype for that function. So now let's look at another error. So we'll add our include statement back in, and we're also gonna add in the header file. So the mylibrary.h file has now been added, but we've forgotten to add our mylibrary.c file. So what effect does that have? In this case, you'd see error messages like this. Now this one's a little harder to decipher, but when you see these recipe for target failed messages, that generally means you're missing a piece of code somewhere. So it's not smart enough to tell us what we're missing, but it is telling us that it's missing something. So the recipe for the target failed, the recipe basically is a piece of code that it was supposed to have and does not have. So when you see recipe for target failed, you want to look through your project and just double check that you haven't missed something. So let's look at one last error. 
So to begin with, though, I'll fix the project in the sense that I'm going to add that missing mylibrary.c file back in. And the error that we're going to introduce this time is that we're going to make the include statement wrong. Specifically, we're going to have the wrong path name to the file that we want. So just to make it clear, we've still got mylibrary.c and .h in the common directory. And those two files were added to the project from the common directory up here. So that's been done correctly, but then the actual include statement in the code doesn't have the full path name to the common directory. So what effect does this have? Well, in this case, we start getting those no rule to make target mylibrary.h errors again, which is the same error that we got before when we were missing our mylibrary.h entirely from the project, which kind of makes sense because we've got an include statement here, but it's not pointing to the right spot to find this file. Now this sort of error can be quite subtle to diagnose just because when you look at things, everything looks okay. You've got all of the files you were supposed to have and you've got an include statement. But this error message is telling us what's wrong, that this path name doesn't point to this file. 